called different, and I'm not even going to explain it. I, I think we can do this. Okay. I woke up this morning and I was different, not in the way one would necessarily describe different, different as in something or somebody else, separate or distinct from another, or contrary to norms or expectations, but different as in different from myself and being, how I used to exist in another time. I am in the same space, dwelling in the same two-bedroom apartment, mother to a son, same brown eyes and weathered face, in the same temporal body, with the same scars on my hands, these hands, following routine, lifeless routine, rehearsed movements and actions and smiles becomes automated without specific intent or care, and yet I am different in a more deeper, more significant, too delicate to internalize type of way. My difference has lain down in a garden of weeds, vain to my cerebral walls. I am now one of many vine-covered walls, a drought cavity of connected spirit of apathy. I am more similar to the world, and my difference has become my conformity a non-contested measure weighed this day. Tomorrow will crest anew. And, um, okay, I have a choice. You want to hear the note or a tribute to a black man? Tribute to a black man. Tribute to a black man, okay. That's the memory then. Tribute to a black man. He stood in front of me, this towering being, composed of physical flesh and bones whose spirit began to soar, reaching out, encompassing every single space in its circumference, making his mere five foot eight stature simply incredulous. Before me stood a man a black man, an extraordinary man whose skin was molded from the ground, bringing forth the fruit of life. He is a symbol of Mother Africa, a homeland that I have never known but always longed for. His gazing eyes lured me and I was trapped in his world when his deep brown glistening eyes made me transparent exposing my frailty, my ingrained flaws and idiosyncrasies, and covering the path of where my truth lies until he reached the essence of my womanhood. He unlocked my secret desires to be a sojourner, and he was my map, course, assign, excuse me, he was my map, destination, assign, excuse me, and he was my map, course, assign, I wanted to uncover all of his personality, unraveling his complexity, understanding the fragments that make up this man of nature's perfection. And I accepted him for things known and unknown whose measure was not dependent upon my scale or opinion, for he is no more, no less. And I looked at this man, this black man, this extraordinary man, whose African temple was a warm blanket wrapped around my skin, and I became the seed planted in his ground, bringing forth green pastures. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Very nice stuff. Please come back. The next person on the list all the way from Michigan is Chris Brooks. Hey, um, this first one is a new poem that I wrote. Um, <laughs> it's not strictly based on it, but it, 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 the initial inspiration was from a dream. I had a dream about 
a spinning wheel with rounds and rounds of bread on it, and I had no <coughs> idea what that was all about. But my little Jungian psychology kind of temperament likes to play with that. So um, this, this poem is titled Sourdough Reality. You tango with reality, make bread into rounds, spin meaning from obscurity, puzzle truth from the daily news, Dreams have a way of nudging reality out of the paper bag, bumping out the side panels of existence, flattening the blue bubble of sanity. They ferment in the unconscious mind, starter mix of untamed yeast, a flash fire in a cooking pan. Let loose, they fill your heart with questions, not with answers, and that's all right. They quiet the darkness, but strip search it on the way out the door, Stifle the buzz of busy voices that sit nestled in the corner among the rags and gasoline, arson-minded liberals, fleet-footed strangers that portend the future, a neighborhood bonfire of the vanities. The Buddha wore a cloak of Maya until he decided to bungee jump and lighten it. He discovered ego bruises, egos bruised easily when inflated, then developed a plan. So hold still. <coughs> You will be quick and painless. You won't feel a thing. The ego deflator is here somewhere. Just give me a second. I keep it here next to the sourdough reality in the side cupboard next to the images spun from the light of the local drive-in cinema. Let, like E.T., we all need to call home sometime. on a meditative experience I had. And so um, it's, it's really kind of um, observations during meditation. It's titled Universal Constant. The incense burns. The ash drops. Inner dreams, inner demons surface. Sit with me, they say. Closer, woman. Come, sit with me. Quiet whispers its soft dirge. Misery wrings her hands, waiting. Dark thoughts seat themselves opposite, staring steadily. The green-eyed dragon circles, fiery reminder of the active mind. Confront, accept, thinking, feeling. Pierce the circle, grasp the tail. Change is constant, constantly changing. The wheel turns. The universe makes one revolution Experience blurs existence. The incense burns. The ash drops a second time. Um, the last one is a short one. Um, a lot of my friends in Cleveland love to write sexual poetry. <laughs> very graphic sexual poetry, and I'm just not very good at that. So I decided to write something short but subtle. And so, hopefully, it'll make you laugh. It's called Getting Biblical. <laughs> it's, it's like a private joke between us. You part the Red Sea while I raise the dead. I like the way you slowly dip your sacred into my profane. It makes me smile. Especially when you decide you want to come back for round two. <laughs>